Yo, atheists, you think you can challenge my faith? Well, I went to public school for 13 years in New York, so I've seen it all. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where I build this big church in Minecraft while I talk about Christianity. And today I'm working on my university over here while I talk about the topic of education, specifically whether Christian parents should send their kids to public schools. This is what a lot of people have been talking about recently, especially given the crazy stuff that's been going on in public schools lately. The narrative in the conservative Christian media is public schools have essentially turned into cesspools of political indoctrination. And there's this common saying in Christian media that, like, if you send your children to Caesar, you shouldn't be surprised when they come home Romans. Things like that. And for good reason. You know, I went to public school for 13 years in New York, and I can say that most of what they're saying is actually true. I mean, some of the things are not as bad as they say they are. Like, for example, science class never said anything anti-Christian, but a lot of the subjects did. History class taught complete pseudo-history that made it sound like white European Christians were the reason for everything bad that's ever happened, ever. They taught complete Reddit atheist-level myths about, like, the scientific revolution, saying that the scientific revolution was a rebellion against the church, when in reality the church laid the groundwork for the scientific revolution. They taught that the church has always been anti-science, they taught that the church has always been repressing progress in society. Where it is in reality, most of the, the social movements that freed the slaves and uh, sparked human rights throughout the world were led by devout Christians. You know, William Wilberforce in Great Britain. He is probably the biggest figure globally who was dedicated to abolishing slavery on moral grounds. But they don't tell you about that. They make it sound like the West, specifically the Christian West, has been responsible for the vast majority of oppression throughout the world. They mention the transatlantic slave trade, which was indeed as horrible as they say it is, but they don't talk about the Arab slave trade, which was much more horrible. So history class was probably the worst. History class was probably the where we had the most indoctrination. But also in, in health class. The type of sex ed that we got was basically not quite as bad as some schools, I think, but basically completely permissive of anything anything goes type of sex ed as long as it's consensual and as long as you use the right contraception and in health class and in sex ed they taught us all the modern gender theory and they taught it as if it was just fact we're not allowed to question it i remember some social worker came into my health class when i was in ninth grade and said she was going to go talk about all the different you know 76 genders or whatever and said that i, I hope that when i'm talking no one says anything like homophobic or, or transphobic and at the time i didn't really know what she meant by that so i was like i said aren't there like two main genders even if you believe in all these other ones and she was like uh, okay that that's kind of it's kind of homophobic so it was clearly a, a lot of indoctrination and the the curriculum of the school was pretty bad, but the teachers were great, were excellent, compared to the other students. Some of the teachers, I think, might have been Christians, even if they weren't allowed to talk about it publicly. And some of the teachers had decent values. I had some really great teachers. The, my favorite teacher was um, my orchestra teacher. He was this Jewish guy, old Jewish guy, and I'm not, he wasn't like conservative or Christian or anything, but he was very old school. And every class he would give some lecture on how much better things used to be back in the good old days, back in the 1950s when he grew up. So he did have a lot of traditional values in some sense, and he talked about traditional work ethic a lot. And he was the hardest working teacher I've ever seen. He would always show up to school at like four in the morning to tune everyone's instruments. And what happened was a lot of the other teachers started to hate him because he was making them look bad because a lot of the other teachers wanted to be more lazy. So he was great, and I had some other teachers who were really great, but I also had teachers who were completely terrible and shouldn't have been teachers at all, clearly hated their jobs, but because of like the tenure of the schools, they just couldn't get fired. So they were just staying there and being the most unfair, silly teachers you could imagine. But like I said, the teachers weren't even the biggest problem. The biggest problem, culturally speaking at least, was the other students. I was basically the only vocal Christian in my entire class, and it wasn't the biggest class, but in my entire grade, I was basically the only vocal Christian until right before the pandemic lockdown, there was another Christian who moved in. He was this Korean Methodist guy, and he was great, but the pandemic started before I got to really know him or anything. So, 
it was very common in high school for all the kids, whether the jockey kids, whether the sort of, I don't know, more criminal, like, ghetto kids, or the goody two-shoes, you know, smart kids who were on the honor roll, all of them would party on the weekends, go into the forest, get drunk, um, have, you know, do inappropriate things with each other in the pitch black forest, and do a lot of drugs, do a lot of weed, do a lot of vaping, and they were completely disrespectful to anyone with traditional values, to any form of religion. And if you wanted to make friends, if you wanted to get along with people, you had to basically engage in all that debauchery. So school was not a good environment for Christians like me. I was always like, people would always make jokes about me being Christian. I was always laughed at. And a lot of people thought I was like bigoted simply for believing what 99% of humans throughout human history have believed, especially about issues like gender and stuff. So it was not a friendly environment. There was a ton of cancel culture, but even if there wasn't cancel culture, there was just pressure to conform to all the degeneracy that they were engaging in. So all that is to say, public school is, is not a good environment. The teachers are often terrible at their jobs. The students often engage in degeneracy. And it is completely understandable why a lot of Christian parents are horrified by it and just want to shelter their kids from it. However, what I've noticed is, you know, it, it is really hard to survive public school as a Christian. But if you do, you'll emerge from it being like a Christian Navy SEAL. It's almost like a vaccine against atheism. If you're exposed to it a lot as a kid, then you're, you end up becoming immune to it, just like the way a vaccine works. I think every Christian should give themselves atheism vaccines. You should, like, look at some atheist arguments on the internet, maybe in small doses, just so you can start thinking through responses to them, because that just makes you, that makes you sharper. So, even though public school sucked, I'm glad I did it, because it made me a much stronger Christian. And I've seen tons of people who go to Christian schools because their parents want to shelter them. But the second they leave those schools, the second they get the tiniest bit of exposure to the outside world, they completely lose their faith, they completely abandon whatever they are raised with. Now, I'm not advocating for any particular perspective here. I'm not saying everyone has to send their kids to public schools. I'm not saying no one should send their kids to public schools. I'm not advocating for anything. I think it's a personal choice for parents, and depending on the situation, depending on the particular schools wherever you live, different parents naturally will make different choices, and that's okay. This is the one time I am not explicitly giving an opinion on something. I'm just listing things for people to consider. Oftentimes, the most, the people who I find are the most jaded and apathetic to the Christian faith are those who are raised in some sort of private Christian school, like some evangelical school, where basically every class, no matter what, is a sermon. But it's like a really, you know, anti-intellectual, dumbed-down sermon. So it's like, I don't know, history classes. Uh, you know, history class is that God made the world in six literal days. And then you go to science class, and science class is, you know, God made the world in six literal days. And then you go to math class, and math class is like, you know, God made the world in six literal days. Not seven days, not five days. It was six days. A lot of fundamentalist parents just want to shelter their kids from the world. And the natural result of that is, like I said, kids will rebel once they get the tiniest ounce of freedom. So... That's why a lot of people I know who are raised in these evangelical schools, which are often not the most intellectual environments, end up becoming completely hardened against the Christian faith. Because something to consider is this. The vast, vast majority of kids, whether they're going to a secular school or a Christian school or, I don't know, a Hebrew school, whatever, high school is not the highlight of their lives. And they generally associate high school and just public school in general, or whatever school they went to, with bad things. So, do you want your children to associate school with Christianity, or do you want them to associate school with that which is against Christianity? I think the latter is honestly better. Because, you know, assuming they're going to have uh, not the best time in school, school is kind of like taking out the trash. It's necessary, but most people don't like it. So given that, you're going to want them to associate school with, you're not going to want to associate, you're not going to want them to associate school with Christianity. Because most people just don't like school. Most people, once they leave school and they go off to college, they're saying, I'm leaving behind my past and I'm exploring my future. 
And, you know, some fundamentalist parents say, okay, well, then I'm just not sending my kids to college either. I'm just going to completely shelter them from the world until Jesus comes back. But no, Christians have to engage with the world. And if we're going to engage with the world like Jesus said we need to, we need to have some sort of exposure to it. And I think when kids are young, that's when they should have some form of exposure to the world. Now, I'm not saying children need to go to public school for the sake of like being missionaries and converting the entire school. That's not the point. The point is that they need to not be completely sheltered from the world if they're going to get some immunity to atheism, basically. Like I said, it's an atheism vaccine. It's the same idea like a lot of parents want their kids to be healthy, so they'll like over sanitize everything, but then the kids end up getting sick a lot more frequently because they just didn't build up good immune systems. It's the same thing for atheist ideas. Kids need to be exposed to a, a diversity of people and perspectives when they're young so that when they go off into the real world and start experiencing a lot of different things, it's not like a shock to their system. And it doesn't, it's just like, yeah, I've seen this before. So that's, but that being said, I'm not saying therefore public school is a good thing because while you do need your kids to get some exposure to the rest of the world, the kids also need a good education. So if I don't send my kids to public school, it won't be on the grounds of, well, public school is not Christian and I can't let them be in any sort of non-Christian environment. It won't be because of that. It'll be because the academic standard, standards of public schools simply suck. Because the purpose of schooling is not so your kids can get a sermon. Now, of course, in theory, I think Christian schools are good in theory, but not in practice. I'm going to explain what I mean by that later. But basically, the main purpose of school is so that your children can learn things, so your children can be prepared for what they have to know in the real world. And if a public school does a crappy job at that, which they usually do these days, I think it used to be different. I've heard that back in the 1950s, America had, like, the best schools out of, like, anywhere, and now America's ranked, like, I don't know, 40th in out of all the countries, and we're probably, like, last place in the developed world when it comes to education. And it's not that we don't spend a lot of money on education, we do, it's just that there's a lack of professionalism in the American education system. And I'm not an expert on this, I don't know exactly why that is, there's probably a lot of reasons. Just, inc just there's a general incompetence in modern American society. Every Everyone is incompetent, basically across the board, except at Chick-fil-A. You know, if Chick-fil-A workers ran the entire world, there would be like, we would solve all world problems. We would solve world poverty on Monday, we would solve violence on Tuesday, it'd be great. Okay, is this, uh, why do these windows look- oh yeah, I, I messed this up. I was talking about incompetence while I built this whole window thing wrong. While I built this window frame wrong. So yeah, but the point is, a reason not to send your kids to public school is because the education simply sucks. It has nothing to do with, like, the clashing religious perspective, necessarily. It's just you want your kids to get a good education, and in most cases, they're just not going to get that at public schools anymore. And it used to be different. Public schools aren't inherently bad. They used to be better, I've heard. So I've heard. But these days, you know, there's a very low standards for education in these public schools. And a lot of times, it will be some political indoctrination, but for the most part, even when they're not indoctrinating people, it's just going to be really bad. And that's what I've experienced. A lot of teachers are simply not good at their jobs. And they simply hate their jobs. And you can tell they hate their jobs, and that completely destroys any motivation for the students to learn anything. But here's why Christian schools in practice aren't always the best either. Now, I said I support them in theory, because as they used to say in the Middle Ages, theology is the queen of the sciences. You can't separate learning about God, learning about theology, from the other areas of life. Medieval schools would teach theology and would connect that to all the other subjects. And I think there's like the classical education movement in the modern world that tries to in some sense, recover the medieval education system. And it's an experiment as of now. I want to see how it goes. I want to see how much success it yields. Because even a good idea, if it's put into practice, it can be put into practice pretty badly. So that's why, in theory, I do support Christian schools. Because educating people with a Christian worldview is important. But the way Christian schools should be is they teach the kids theology and the theology inspires them to pursue excellence in all the other areas. So the theology inspires them to become the best mathematicians and the best scientists and the best music uh, musicians and the best artists and all that. But in practice, that's not how it works. In practice, most of the time, it's not that 
being a Christian school inspires it to pursue excellence in all these other all these other areas. In practice, it's it's good because it's Christian. The parents and the teachers think all that matters is that this is a Christian school, and we're just gonna basically teach some very vague fundamentalist lowest common denominator Christianity. And we're not going to worry about academic excellence because the point of schooling isn't to pursue academic excellence. It's just to basically make sure my kids have a Christian upbringing, even if the quality of that Christian upbringing is crap. And that's why I'll, I've heard stories in like, you know, these non-denominational Christian schools, they have like the gym teacher also be the, the science teacher or something. And history class is just watching like God's Not Dead episode 49. I've never seen any of those movies. I refuse to watch any, you know, of those Christian kinds of movies because they're not making movies better. They're just making Christianity worse. So, yeah, a lot of the time Christian schools in practice is just a crappier version of the public school with a Christian label slapped on it. Here's something that I struggle to explain to a lot of people. Something isn't high quality just because it's Christian. There's an objective standard that everything should try and live up to. And if the Christian schools aren't doing a good job living up to that standard, which in practice today they often don't, they're just embarrassing the name of Christianity. So I would say Christian schools are good if, and only if, they meet objectively high standards of education. And if they don't, you're probably better off sending your kid to some sort of Catholic school or secular private school. And okay, what about the option of homeschooling? So basically in my experience, I've met a lot of homeschool people. There's really two types of homeschoolers. There's the type where the parents want to educate the kids in like super advanced stuff and they think public school is just slowing them down. Often these are like immigrant parents who come from a super educated background who want their kids to do like advanced calculus in third grade. Now that type of homeschooling, where the homeschooling is for the purpose of giving the children a better education than they would get elsewhere, that is good. That is, that's fine. The other type of homeschooling that I think is bad is where the parents simply want to shelter their kids from the world. And that's the whole, you know, making your kids have zero immunity to the rest of the world. I am very against this fundamentalist retreatist model that what you really need to do is just retreat from the rest of the world. A lot of Christian parents homeschool their kids not because they care about giving their kids an objectively good education, but because they just want to shelter their kids from the world. And what's going to happen? The kids are not going to be good warriors for Christ. The kids are just, um, either the kids are going to stay sheltered forever and not have any impact on the rest of the world, or they will get exposure to the rest of the world, but the second they do, they're just going to leave the faith because they never had exposure. They never got inoculated to the way the rest of the world is. So that's why homeschool kids are either like the smartest, most genius kids you've ever met, or they're people who are clearly very sheltered, and there is a nice innocence to it. Now, I'm not saying kids need to be completely exposed either, because a lot of public school kids are learning about inappropriate things when they're eight years old, like way too inappropriate for their age. And there's some nice innocence about, you know, kids who are not subjected to all that gross stuff. But eventually, it's a bit concerning when you see kids that are, that are like, college age, high school age, and still don't know basic stuff about the world because the parents just tried to shelter them. So homeschooling for the sake of excellence is good, but I would say homeschooling for the sake of sheltering is bad. And the parents do need to make sure the kids are raised Christians. So when I'm saying sheltering is bad, I'm not saying that it's bad for parents to raise their kids well. Instead of basically hiding the kids away in some underground bunker, the parents need to give the kids a sword and a shield when they're ready. And like I said, that doesn't mean you throw a second grader into some bad public school environment with the hope that the second grader is going to like convert the entire school. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that in small doses, in a reasonable fashion, parents need to give kids exposure to the outside world so that when the kid is old enough, the kid can indeed make an impact and the kid can indeed 
learn how to understand why they believe what they believe instead of just believing it because that's how they were raised. And I think if you're a Baptist, you should like that. You know, Baptist, the, even though I'm not Baptist, the Baptist faith is all about, you know, baptism needs to be a personal individual choice. You know, being Christian is a personal choice. You're not just a Christian because your parents told you to be. You're not just a Christian because you were baptized as a baby because Baptists don't do that. So if you're Baptist, especially if you're part of my Baptist audience, you should like the idea that it's important for you know, kids to understand why they believe what they believe. And for that to happen, they need to get some exposure to people who don't believe the same things. And that's why the main responsibility of parents for raising the kids well is not to shelter them. It's not to hide them away from the rest of the world. It's to catechize them. Catechizing your kids is the most important thing. Having parents who are present and active and who catechize the kids is way more important than a good Sunday school program, way more important than a, a good school, way more important than homeschooling your kids. Good catechesis, meaning using your church's catechisms to train kids in the knowledge of the faith, that is what's most important. And there's some statistic out there that says like, I don't know, 70% of kids who go to public school um, like Christian kids who go to public school will leave the faith, but 90% of Christian kids who are homeschooled will stay in the faith. Um, I haven't fact-checked that. I'm not sure if that's accurate, but I'm willing to believe it. But then again, correlation does not equal causation. Just because that's true doesn't mean the public school is causing them to leave the faith. Generally, because of cultural pressures, the majority of not the majority, but a lot of people who are raised Christian leave the faith because of the cultural pressure. Religion is declining all across the board. But generally speaking, the parents who send their kids, to, or the parents who make sure to make a point to homeschool their kids, generally speaking, those parents are also going to be the parents who are invested in making sure those kids are raised in the faith. So what really matters, I think, is not exactly where the kids go to school, but how invested the parents are in raising the children in the faith. So if the parents are very invested in that, then those kids are going to be um, much more likely to stay in the faith whether or not they end up going to public school. But generally speaking, parents who would make a point of not sending their kids to public school would also be the parents who care a lot about raising their kids in the faith. Whereas parents who send their kids to public school, sometimes they still care a lot about raising their kids in the faith. Like, my girlfriend also went to public school, and she's also seen all of the degeneracy of public school and has rejected it. And that's how I know she's going to stand firm in the faith her whole life, because she went through public school and then she went to a super crazy progressive college and was like completely alone in her faith for a while and endured some of the worst things that I'm not going to even tell you on camera. But... She survived it, and that's how I know she's always going to be strong in her faith. Honestly, like, if I personally were to marry someone who was always, like, a sheltered homeschooler their entire life, I would be a bit skeptical. I'd be like, how do I know this person is going to stay strong in her faith? But I know that my girlfriend will. And her parents were very dedicated to raising her in the faith. They sent her to public school knowing that she would be exposed to some bad stuff, but they made sure to catechize her. She tells me that when she was a little kid, her dad, like, wouldn't let her start eating dinner until she could answer some questions from the Westminster Larger Catechism or whatever. So it really matters. Whether you send your kids to public school, whether you send your kids to a Christian school, please only do that if the Christian school has objectively high academic ratings, or you send your kids to a um, secular private school, did I already say that? Or you homeschool your kids, no matter what you do. The most important thing is just to catechize your kids to give your children an intellectual education in the Christian faith. Alright guys, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later. Now I'm going to speed this up while I finish working on my university.